Let's start with the word. Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, and you are mine. I'll tie this together for you in a minute. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, nor the flame scorch you. Pass through the waters, Exodus, walk through the fire, Shadrach. You all know that story? All right. Because I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Now, I gave Egypt, Egypt which was black for your ransom. Egypt which was black, which ruled everything. You were nothing compared to them. When somebody set you up as the standard, what does that mean? You're the biggest, you're the baddest, you're the boldest. Ethiopia and Sheba in your place. Cush ruled Egypt, Cush ruled Ethiopia, Cush ruled Sheba. Since you are precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Therefore, I gave men for you and people for your life. Next verse. Fear not, he tells them again, for I am with you. He's encouraging the Israelites. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, don't keep the, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. He's talking about the diaspora when the Jews spread it everywhere and he wanted to bring them back to Israel. This is a prophecy. Everyone who is called by what? My name, Hashem, whom I have created for whose glory? My glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. For my glory, you scattered all around. <laughs> but I'm going to bring you back in spite of the kingdom of Cush which exists, which can and has pressed you. All right, y'all got it? In that day, five cities in the land of Egypt, Isaiah 19, the land of Egypt is what? Black. Will speak the language of Canaan. Canaanites were what? Black. And swear by the Lord of hosts, one will be called the city of destruction. In that city, there will be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. He's, pro he's prophesying that Egypt one day will worship the Lord. Their God was Anun. And a pillar to the Lord at its border. In that video, I showed you Egypt, Cush, Sabians, all of that. 700 times in the Old Testament. You don't talk about somebody 700 times unless they're important. And it will be a sign. It will be for a sign and for a witness to the Lord of hosts and the land of Egypt, for they will cry out to the Lord because their opponents, because of the opponents, and he will send them a savior, a mighty one, and he will deliver them. He's saying Egypt shall be delivered. Then the Lord will be known where? In Egypt. And the Egyptians will know the Lord in that day and will make sacrifice and offerings. Yes, they will make a vow to the Lord and perform it. Again, he's talking about Egypt, accepting the Lord as the one true living God. And the Lord will strike Egypt and he will strike the, and heal it. They will return to the Lord, and he will be entreated by them and heal them. In that day, there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrians will come into Egypt, and the Egyptians into Assyria, and the Egyptians will serve the Assyrians. He's prophesying that the Assyrians will go in and invade Egypt, which they did. In that day, Israel will be one of the three, one of three with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land, 
whom the Lord of hosts shall bless him. Blessed is who? Egypt. Think about that. He's pronouncing blessings over Egypt. My people and the Assyria, the work of my hands and Israel, my inheritance. Look how he named them. Go back. Egypt is my people. The Assyrians are the work of his hands, and Israel is his inheritance. But he spoke blessings over all three groups. All right. You got a timeline in your, in your, in your, in your handout, and when people tell you that Egypt was always Ar Ar Arabic, Arabic, or however you want to pronounce it, it's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. It did not become Aramaic until, after, until way into the, New, into the New Testament. For thousands of years, it was all black. All throughout the Old Testament, all black. And so on the timeline, it's showing you different events. So when Joseph was in, Israel, in, in Egypt, the Pharaoh was what? Black. When Moses was in Egypt, the Pharaoh was what? Black. And so when people start showing you, you'll bring, and that's why that last movie, Egypt, remember that last movie came out a couple of years ago and it bombed because people said it was not historically correct because people know better now. And they had all them white folks in there. And they were like, the devil is alive and when the white folks in there, in the Exodus. And they showed one in Egypt. <laughs> so I gave you the map and I put some key things that was happening in the Old Testament. And then I juxtaposed that with what was going on in the Cush kingdom. Because the kingdom of Cush was the kingdom. All right? And then on the, la the second timeline, it shows you um, the Arabs came in 640 CE, common era. That's when the Assyrians invaded. But all that other stuff happened before then. And guess what? When they invaded, who was there when they got there? Black folks. So who did they mix with? Black folks. Are there still black Egyptians? Yeah. Let's go on. Then I gave you this map, because you need to have this map. The kingdom of Cush was so big, you see the dotted red lines? That's what the pharaoh, the black pharaohs controlled. That's why a black pharaoh controlled more land, more territory than an Egyptian king ever did. The Cush king. I had a... Uh, 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 classmate in college named Cush. And I always thought his name was strange, but I thought it was cute. But his parents knew what they were doing. I just didn't know. And so they reigned for 3,000 years. And then there was another classmate used to tease me all the time. He nicknamed me Nubian Queen. I didn't know what it meant then. I know what it means now. <laughs> they had three capitals. The capitals were Kerma, Napata, and Moreau. But I wanted you to have that. So if any time when someone start, you start saying, you know what? Pharaoh didn't look like you or Brenna. And they say, shut your mouth. You don't know what you're talking about. Legend, Cush was the oldest race on earth. Legend, they like to call it legend, they don't want to call it fact. The Garden of Eden was in the land of Cush. So Adam and Eve 
What did that? Connect the dots. Go on. <laughs> Connect the dots, Sherry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Connect the dots. We got to know our history. If we don't know who we are and where we came, do you know what kind of mm, royalty you have in your DNA? So the land of Kush today is known as the land of Sudan. And I watched these different videos from National Geographic and all of this different stuff. You can go on YouTube and just put in the kingdom of Kush and watch videos until Jesus comes. And you'll find out the truth. It's all out there. And um, the, land, the, the, the land of Cush, how do I want to say this? No, let's go. So I already did this. It's been in there 700 times. When you see in the Bible, you see Cush, you see the word Egypt, you see Ethiopia, you see Sheba, you see the Sabaeans. That whole map tells you that was all Cush. All right? Let's keep going. All descendants, I told you all this last year, all descendants of Ham were black people. The Cushites, the Egyptians, the people from Put, the, the Canaanites, they were all black people. And they call that, some call the region Nubian. Okay? Those are different names of all the black people. So when you read in your Bible, and you see the word Cush, and you see the word Ethiopia, Egyptians, the Ethiopians, the Sabaeans, Sabaeans were the queen of Shiva, the queen of Shiva. All right? Let's go. Now, Cush, Egypt's at the top, and Cush was the southern neighbor of, of Egypt. And they were in constant war with each other. At one point, Egypt ruled Cush. Another point, Cush ruled Egypt. The map that you have show that when Cush ruled Egypt, it just didn't rule Egypt. It went even across the river. See how it went across the river at the top? So black, there were black pharaohs. No, anytime you see pharaoh in the Old Testament, you know the person was black. Okay? Let's keep going. This is the black feral I want to talk about. There are several of them. But his name was Taharka. And Taharka ruled that whole kingdom of Kush that you have on your map. He, the man, ruled more territory, the richest, baddest man at that time for years. All right? He, he owned, I mean, he had more territory. His kingdom was bigger than any of the Egyptian territory. So you understand now why the Egyptians didn't want you to know about Taharka. All right? Keep going. The Kush kingdom set the standard for everybody for Sudan, for Egypt, for Sheba, all the way over to China, Israel, and Assyria. They had global, international influence when they ruled, ran everything. All right? Now, look at this. This is an artist's rendition of what a black pharaoh would have looked like. And this is a, another artist's rendition of um, someone giving homage to a black pharaoh. And I just wanted you to see that. But when we get to, but his nose is Negroid, right? And when they, when they found the pyramid with his face on it, something happened to his nose. Keep going. Egyptian culture and Kush culture were so intertwined and they were in, 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 into uh, twine because they were right next to each other. And so when one ruled, one influenced the other. When the other one ruled, they influenced the other. So they, 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 their cultures were, here's the, the picture of him with the nose 
half his nose missing. <laughs> but their cultures were so intertwined, the Nubian culture, you, it, you could call it Kush culture, you could call it Egyptian culture, just depending on the time period you were talking about. All right? Let's keep going. Ah, the video part is still in there. Yeah, that's what it's doing. You know, and uh, the only reason I left this slide in here, I was going to take the slide out. You see the queen? Does she look Negroid? They did that so much to us. Because in their mind, black people couldn't accomplish and build a civilization and an empire that big, that awesome. We were incapable because they portrayed us in Africa as being barbaric, cannibals, stupid, and only good for nothing but slavery. I, and I, I had to search to find Negroid renditions, I mean, art, art renditions of what black people would have looked like during that time. Because they wanted to make us look more like, keep going. So this is back to what I told you all last month. Don't believe everything you see on TV. The kings were chosen from the family, from royal nobility. They had a system of secession in place. And I'll skip up. They were engineers. They were architects. They were farmers. They were alchemists. They were builders. They were bad. All right? And they had skillful archers. When they went to war, they didn't go to lose. How do you think the kingdom got that big? And I'm doing it through pictures because I want you to start seeing what was lost, seeing what was stolen, seeing what was buried. Okay, let's keep going. And now when you talk about the Kush Kingdom, you'll know what the Kush Kingdom is. The Kush Kingdom defined culture and political landscape of the Northeastern Africa for over a thousand years. That's a long time, y'all. Keep going. Those are the different black pharaohs that ruled, and as the next slide will show you, they had an order of succession that the pharaoh died before, before um, when the pharaoh died, the queen would take over and she would rule, and then her children may or may not rule, or the brother would rule. They had an order of succession, and they had no problems with black queens ruling Kush. And next week, we'll talk about the candidates of Kush. And they were black queens named Candace, just like the kings were called pharaohs. Some bad mamma jamma. And when, when, when uh, Kendall was saying she went to war, she went to battle, one of the queens led her troops into battle. One of the Candace queens, when Rome was invading and they came down and they wanted to invade their territories, they ran up against Candace and ran home. It was bad. All right? We'll talk about that next week. They built an em the largest empire that's ever existed in the world. Keep going. They were international traders. They learned diplomacy at a very early age. And um, I'll send you the video that, I that was shown so you can look at the video at your own leisure. I'll just send it out through email. Um, they were international traders and they traded uh, skins, ivory. They were miners, okay? 
they mined gold, they mined, they mined iron, and with the iron, the weapons and the bow and the, the um, arrows that they built and the weaponry that they built was the best in the land. And so they sold weaponry to the other country. All right. I just know it all, and the slides are slower than my brain is right now. I keep going. <laughs> but they learned one thing, too. They learned that the best way to rule was through diplomacy, not trying to kill everybody and rule and reign over anybody. Hey, come be a part of our kingdom, and let's work together. And when they went and they, they, they started, right now they're digging in Sudan, and they're, they're, they're bringing up artifacts that in these tombs from all over the world, all over the world at that time, and that's, when, that's how they discovered how wide their trade route was. They, was. they were finding things from China and India and Africa. All right? Keep going. So, one interesting thing happened when the first archaeologist, and his name was Reisner, I, think, I can't remember if he was German or English, British, or whichever one he was, and he went over and he went into Sudan and he found the first tomb. And of course they did what they always do. They raided the tombs and took all of the valuables out of the tombs, right? So he raided the tomb, he took all of the valuables out of the tomb, and he took it back to Europe, and he started telling them about this these finds that he was finding all this stuff down in Sudan below Egypt and all of the archaeologists and the educators and the scholars said that's impossible because only intelligent people were in Egypt. And they said these are fake, your findings are fake, you are lying from the pit of hell, we don't believe you. And he didn't get half the money he thought he was going to get from his artifacts. Keep going. Because when you believe one thing for so long and somebody come and tell you something different, do you believe them on first pass? Mm. They were intelligent. They developed their own language and their own script, cursive script. Isn't that interesting that they developed a cursive script and our children can't write in cursive now? Isaiah 45, 11. Isaiah 45 is one of my favorite chapters, and I, and I read Isaiah 45. Sometimes it's, it's one of my, what I call inheritance scriptures. Sometimes when I just need to hear from the Lord, he'll tell me where to go read, right? And one, this is one chapter he'll have. And I always wondered about this verse, 45, 14. Thus says the Lord, the labor of Cush, and the, the labor of Egypt, and the merchandise of Cush, and of the Sabaeans, Men of statue shall come over to you, and they shall be yours. What is he doing? He's setting the standard. He's telling them, Cush is the bomb right now. But they shall come over to you, and they shall be yours. He's predicting when they will be invaded, and they will be uh, subject to slavery. All right? They shall walk behind you, they shall come over in chains, and they shall bow down to you, they shall make supplication to you, saying, surely God is in you, no other. The mistake that Cush made was they chose the wrong God. So, the myth that has been perpetuated for thousands of years that's just being uncovered, and now I know why God had me study this out, was that Black Africans could not have built a powerful civil like civilization like Kush. Noses were altered to support the white men. They stole our heritage. They stole our legacy. They stole our story. They stole our wealth. They buried our culture. Keep going. 
going. Go down to the last slide. Can you can we take it to the to the last slide? Oh, I already told you all this part anyway. How they all, they all conspired to erase our history. The problem is now. Remember, and God is just tying this thing together. Remember when I told you once the internet happened and social media happened, they could no longer control the flow of information. Now it's out there on YouTube. So go to YouTube and put in the Kush Kingdom. Or just put in black pharaohs. And you'll see it all for yourself. You don't have to bleed past the lily. All right? But they wanted us to believe that our legacy has always been slavery. We were slaves to the Israelites. We were slaves to the Egyptians. We were slaves to the Assyrians. We were slaves to the Germans. We were slaves to the British. We were slaves to the Americans. I know who I am. I am royalty, destined to possess the land. A growing king, a growing queen. The New Testament puts it this way. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That's who we are. Why do you think we preach to the children all the time? I am a chosen generation. We want them to know who they are. And our kids don't have any reason to rhyme or to walk around with their head down because of the color of their skin. None of us do. If anything, we need to learn, go back to the 70s and say it loud. It ain't nothing wrong with that. You don't think the Irish are proud? You don't think the Germans are proud? Why we got to be ashamed of our people? Because they, they take the worst thing that they can find about us and they magnify it and they take the best things that we've done and they minimize it and bury it. So you think you nothing when they know you something, honey. You understand? We are a chosen people. We are royalty. We came from a powerful legacy of people. As I was studying this out, the thing that kept rising in my spirit was, man, there's some bad stuff in my DNA that I didn't even know about. Can you, I mean, do you understand? Just like when the choir was up there in, the, in, in these stoves, what did they look like? royalty. Did you see it? We wear it well. We wear it well. And I'm, 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 I'm done. I just want you all to know, don't let anybody make you ashamed of who you are. Don't let them make you drop your head for anything. God created all of us. God did not curse black people. That's a lie they told. I just showed you the scripture where it said he blessed us. Take them back to Isaiah and say, oh no, baby, here it is right here. Egyptians, that's me. That's my peeps. They're my peeps right there. They're my peeps, the Egyptians. He blessed us just like he did the Assyrians and the Israelites. They have missed interpreted and misused the Bible to beat us down for so long, but the Bible is our book and our history. That's what the Old Testament is. But it's how you use it. 
Amen. This is the word of the Lord.